Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over another example of using Kirchhoff circuit laws to determine, in this case, a voltage and then the direction and the magnitude of the currents in the rest of the branches of the circuit. In a previous video, I kind of made an introduction and explanation video of how what Kirchhoff's rules are and how we apply them. And I've also made some additional example videos, which you can link to all those videos in the description to this video. Okay, here's the circuit we have. We have a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8 ohm resistor, 4 resistors, and we have two volt source. One is known, 40 volts, and this one is unknown. This is the unknown voltage source. So we're going to find that voltage source and the direction of the currents in each of the branches of this circuit. Now, the first thing that we have to do is we have to identify all of the nodes. And in this circuit, we have four nodes, N1, N2, and we'll just call it last one, what the heck, N4. That's the first step, identify the nodes and the in, in the circuit. Now, the second step is to identify the current and the direction of the currents in the circuit. And we have a bunch of branches. And the first one we're going to say is I1, and it flows through the top of this circuit like that. Then the next current we have is I2. It flows from right to left from N3 to N2. Then we have I3, which flows from 2 to 1. And then we're going to identify I4 as the current that flows from 2 to 4. And then we're going to round things out with I5 and I6, just like that. So I, um, those are the two things we need to do to be able to apply the current rule, identify the nodes and the currents and the direction for each current. I just want to point out that the direction I chose for each current is completely arbitrary. You can choose any direction that you like. It'll all come out in the math. When we calculate the current, if we get a positive answer, we know we chose the correct direction for the current. When we calculate the current, we get a negative answer. We know we chose the wrong direction for the current, and the current is actually flowing in the opposite direction. Okay, now the last thing we have to do in order to be able to apply the voltage rule is to identify the direction. We're going to go around each of these three loops, one, two, and three. We also have this outer loop, which we could use if we need it, but for this problem, we don't. So we're going to say for this top loop, we'll call it L1, and we're going to go around this loop in the clockwise direction. We're going to go around this loop also in the clockwise direction, and we're going to go around this loop to mix things up a little bit in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, there you go. And again, the direction I chose for those loops is completely arbitrary. If you want to choose different directions, that's up to you. It'll all work out in the math. Just pay attention to your negative and your positive signs. Okay, as I told you, we're going to find all of the currents and this voltage source. And these two currents and this voltage source, we already know is 40. So we don't need to find that one. But I'm going to tell you that in this problem, we're going to be given I4. And I4 is 3 amps. And that is the current that flows in this branch right here is 3 amps through this 8 ohm resistor. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the current rule at each of the four nodes in this circuit. The current rule knows, a current rule, as you know, says that the sum of the currents in and out is equal to zero, or we can also say that the currents in are equal to the currents out of each node. And in this node, just for example, we have current I3 and 6, they flow in and they're equal to current I1, which flows out. Okay, and these are the current rule applications for the rest of the nodes. I'm not going to go through each one step by step. You can check them if you like, but I think I got those worked out just like that. Currents in are equal to the currents out. Now we're also going to apply the voltage rule for each of the loops in the circuit. And we're going to do number one, number two, and then number three. We'll start with number one right here. I like to start here in the upper left-hand corner. We're going to go around this direction in the clockwise direction we said the first thing we encounter is this two ohm resistor now we don't know the voltage but we can use ohm's law to help us calculate the voltage because we know the voltage is equal to current times resistance we know the current is i1 the resistance is two and we're going with the current when we go around so it's negative it's a voltage drop so we put negative two i2 the voltage is the current times the resistance now we continue around we encounter this four ohm resistor and once again we're going with the current that we designated the direction that we designated so it's minus four i2 across is minus six i3 and then we come back to where we started, and that's the last element, and so we set that equal to zero. Okay, for loop number two, we're going to start here again and go clockwise. This time we're going against the current as we go across the 6-ohm resistor, so that's going to be positive 6I3. And then we go with the direction of the current in this branch. Remember, we know I4 is 3 amps, and this is the resistance 8. The voltage is the current times resistance, so I'm going to write down negative 3 times 8. That's the known voltage. And then we come across again, we have this unknown voltage source, and we're going from the positive to the negative to the positive terminal, so that's going to be a positive voltage gain. I put down VK for voltage unknown. That's the last element, set that equal to zero. We're going to do the same thing, start right here again, the upper left. This time we're going counterclockwise. We know this is 3, we know this is 8. I'm going to put minus 3 times 8 again. We go across this 
voltage source, which is 40 from the negative to the positive, that's a positive voltage gain. And we go across the four ohm resistor and therefore we have minus four I2 and that's how we're gonna do that. Okay, that's all my current rules and all my voltage rules. I'd like to write them all out, get them all set up and now I can solve the problem. Where should we start? Well, we know that I4 is three amps. Now, is that going to help us at first? Mm, I'm not quite sure because we can use this equation down here. It has only one unknown in it. We can solve this equation for I2, which we'll do on the next slide, and then we'll have I2. And this equation only has that one variable in it, so we can solve pretty easily for I2, the current through branch, the current through this branch right here. Okay, so we're going to simplify this now. We have minus 24, because it's 3 times 8 and um, minus three times eight, and then that plus 40, and then minus four I2, we're gonna simplify again, and we're gonna get that I2 is equal to minus 16 divided by minus four, and that means that I2 has a current of four amperes. That's the current through this branch right here, okay? It's positive four, so that means we chose the correct direction for that current. Okay, let's move on. You can see I put that up here for I2 is four, now we know I2 and I4, and I think we might be able to use one of our current rules. Let's see if we have one where there's 2 and 4, 2 and 4, 2 and 4. I think uh, this one has 2 and 4 in it, so we can solve for I3 on the next slide. So here's the current rule we had, the current equation we had for N number 2. We're going to solve that equation for I3. We get that I3 is equal to 2 minus 4. We can plug our values in, and we get that the current through this branch right here, I3, is one ampere like that. Again, it's positive, so it's flowing in the correct direction that we chose. Okay, we're gonna put that in there. Now we know two, three, and four, and let's see, probably we'll try and do I1 next. We're gonna use this equation right here. We know two, we know the current through three, so we can solve for the current through one. If we're gonna substitute those values in, Here's the equation we had for loop number one. We have I1, we know two and three. We can substitute the values in. Two, minus two I2, minus four times four, minus six times one, equals zero. And we move that over like that, and we get that I1 is equal to 22 divided by, that's right, minus two, and the current is minus 11. Now, once again, I want to point out that doesn't mean the current is less than zero or that it's a negative current. It means that for I1, we chose the wrong direction. So remember, I1 is actually negative, and that means that this is the wrong direction. So I'm going to take these arrows out and place them in the right direction, like that, and the current for I1 actually flows in the clock, excuse me, the counterclockwise direction. All right, so now we have all of our currents except for five and six, and I think we can use the rest of our current rules to determine five and six. But first, before we do that, we don't want to forget about our voltage. We're going to solve for the voltage because we now we know I3, we can solve for this voltage. And we have six I3 um, minus three times eight equals the voltage. Uh, plus the voltage equals zero. And we're going to plug our value in for I3. And we're going to solve for the voltage. And we get that that voltage source is 18. So this is an 18 volt voltage source. And we can plug that in, come back to our starting slide. And now we can solve for I5 and I6. So I'm going to use the equations uh, for our current rule N3 and N at node N3 and node N4. First, we're going to solve for I5. Rearrange this equation, we know one and two. Now, I want to point out, you have to remember this. This current, when we originally designated, when we originally found this current, this current is minus 11. Now, that means we changed the direction, but for the way we originally had it set up, we have to keep the minus sign and use the minus sign again. So we have minus 11, minus four. That means that the current through I5 is 15 amps but that this current is once again flowing in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna take that current out and I'll show it pointing in the correct direction like that. And then we're gonna come back and place that in. Now we're gonna solve for I6. Now I6 is just four plus five. And we're gonna choose that um, 
I4 is 3. We're not going to choose that. We know I4 is 3. And I5, this is what I mean. We calculated minus 15. We have to leave that minus 15 because that's how it was when we originally set it up. And then we have I6 is minus 12. That doesn't mean the current is minus less than less than less than zero. It just means it's flowing in the opposite direction. So I'm going to take the arrow out. And there you go. And we have all of our values. Okay, we solve for all of those currents. We solve for that unknown voltage. That was a little bit of physics and a lot of algebra and math. You got to keep your negative and your positive signs straight. And of course, you also have to apply the current and the voltage rule and set it all up. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following three things. That would be, give me a nice thumbs up for this video. Give me a nice positive comment in the comment section below for this video. And also subscribe to my channel get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.